So a few days ago, Ubuntu and all its official flavors released version 24.10. And I took a look at the flagship edition of Ubuntu, Ubuntu 24.10, Oracular Oriole is the code name. And today what I wanted to do, I wanted to take a look at one of the flavors. The flavor that I'm going to take a look at today is Lubuntu 24.10. The reason I chose Lubuntu is because I actually like Lubuntu as a distribution. I like the LXQt desktop environment. I like the fact that it's lightweight, that it's very minimal uses the open box window manager. I also just like following along with the LXQ development because it's a rather new desktop environment that does see constant improvement. So, you know, I just wanted to check that out today. So I've spun up a virtual machine here and I'm going to run through a quick installation of Lubuntu and the very first thing you notice when you open the installer for Lubuntu is it uses the Calamaris installer, the familiar Calamaris installer that many Linux distributions default to. But that's kind of an odd choice because Ubuntu has its own Flutter based installer now that they're working on and that is some of the other Ubuntu flavors are going to also adopt. And then, of course, you had the old Ubiquity installer that some of the Ubuntu flavors still default to. Lubuntu is rather interesting in that it defaults to using the Calamaris installer. But you know what? I really don't care. All three of those installers, the new Flutter-based installer, the old Ubiquity installer, and the Calamaris installer, in my opinion, all good installation programs, so I have no problems here. Now, of course, the very first screen is you choose the uh, language for the install. It has chosen American English for me, so that is fine. So I'm just going to go ahead and click next here. Let me move my head out of the way so you guys can see these buttons over here. Next up, you need to pick your region, so your time zone. Now, that's probably using some geolocation here. It has correctly chosen the central time zone in the U.S. for me, so there's nothing for me to do. I just need to click Next. Next up, I need to pick my keyboard model. As far as the keyboard layout, English U.S. is correctly chosen for me, so once again, all I need to do is just click Next. And then finally, we come to the installation mode. Do I want to do the full installation, which is all applications in the normal installation, plus all the third Third party packages listed below. The third party packages would be Element, Thunderbird, Vert Manager, and Krita. Now, for purposes of this video, I'm not going to use any of these additional applications, so I'm not going to do the full installation. I'm going to do the normal installation, which is just the web browser, some basic utilities, office software, games, and media players. They also offer a minimal installation, which is just the desktop environment, nothing else. So that's a very minimal installation. You would choose that if you want to uh, pick and choose each and every program that you want to install. But for me, I'm just going to do the normal installation. And then right here, additional options. Do I want to download and install? Install updates following the installation. I'll go ahead and tick that on as well just to save a little time. And now I'll click next. And next up is the partition. Do I want to erase the entire disk, give the whole disk over to Lubuntu, or do I want to manually partition the drive myself? Manual partitioning would be something you might do. For example, if you're dual booting, maybe you're dual booting alongside another operating system like Windows, then you might have to manually partition the drive yourself. For me, I'm going to do the automatic partitioning and then swap. We have the option of no swap or swap to file. I'll swap to file. And then we have the option of using extend for, butterfs, or xfs as our file system. It defaults to extend for, so I'll stick with the default. And now I'll click next. Now I need to create my user. So I'm going to go ahead and call my user dt. I need to create a host name for this computer. I'm going to call this computer uh, lubuntu-vm. And then finally, I need to create a strong and complicated password for the dt user and then repeat the strong and complicated password for the DT user. And then finally, do I want to log in automatically without asking for a password that is ticked off? I'm going to leave that ticked off because you should always have to enter a password to get into any computer just for privacy reasons. And then use Active Directory. That's ticked off. I'll leave that ticked off. I don't know what Active Directory is. I don't have never used it. I think it's a Windows thing. So I'll click next and finally location keyboard partitions. Get a little summary here. Everything looks good and I'll go ahead and click the install button. And one more warning here. Do I really want to do this? Yes. Install now and away it goes. Now the installer typically takes about five to ten minutes from this point forward. So I'm going to pause the video. I'll be back once Lubuntu 24.10 has finished installing. 
and the installation completed just fine. I went ahead and rebooted the machine and I am greeted to this really quite gorgeous LXQ desktop environment. I really love the wallpaper. This is a really cool wallpaper here. Obviously, Oracular Oriole was the code name for this group of Ubuntu and official Ubuntu flavors. You know, they're using the Oriole, the bird. So it is nice having a, an appropriately themed wallpaper as the default wallpaper. So the desktop environment is LXQ 2.0. Let's see if I can get any kind of about information here. If I go to about, yep, about LXQ. This is version 2.0.0. I go into technical info. You can see that they're using Qt 6.6.2. So it's using Qt 6. And this is important because the past versions of Lubuntu and the older versions of LXQ were using Qt 5. So everything has kind of been migrated over to using Qt 6. I think the only program that was still a Qt 5 program Program was actually the Calamaris installer itself, the installation program. Let me go through the menu system and see what is installed by default here on Lubuntu 24.10. Remember, I did the normal installation, so they did have a bigger full installation, and they also had a very minimal installation. I chose the normal installation. So it should have some programs, but it shouldn't have a ton of programs. So under accessories, we have Featherpad, which is our plain text editor. So Featherpad, very lightweight, plain text editor, uh, really not much to it. If you're used to, if you're a Windows user and you're used to something like Notepad, then Featherpad is a very similar kind of plain text editor. Also under accessories, we had KCalc for our calculator. KCalc, of course, is a uh, one of the KDE applications about KCalc. You can see this is version 24.08.1. You're going to see a lot of KDE applications here in Lubuntu with the LXQt desktop environment because KDE is also Qt based. LXQt is Qt based. So you can mix and match a lot of the KDE applications. They integrate quite well into the LXQt desktop environment. Also under accessories, we have the uh, KVantum manager, which we could play around with the theming and uh, I'm not going to do that. I actually I actually did want to mention though that the theming with KVantum, you know, the, if I open the file manager here, this file manager, by the way, is PCManFM. This is PCManFM Q. This is version 2.0.0. Uh, really fantastic little file manager, but the theming has been worked on and it's a really nice, uh, cute theme here that they're using. So I just wanted to mention, you know, I really like the default theme. It's got a kind of classic look. I really like the icon sets they're using as well. Also under accessories, we have Clipper, which is would be our clipboard manager. Uh, we have Redshift, which is a uh, color a monitor color adjustment tool. So adjust the color temperature of your monitors depending on time of day. Uh, it's supposed to be better for your eyesight as well as better for your sleep patterns. I've never actually used Redshift myself, but I do know it's a very popular tool. One interesting thing to note here is they do have Vim installed by default. And this is one of the things I love about Lubu Ubuntu because I think it's the only one of the Ubuntu flavors that actually installs Vim out of the box. And if I go to system tools, it installs HTOP out of the box. So you guys know I constantly talk about how Ubuntu really should just install Vim, full Vim, and HTOP out of the box. I think everybody wants it there anyway. It doesn't make sense not to have those tools there. And I've complained about it for years and years. I, I think I complained about it in the past on Lubuntu a few years back. And I think somebody at Lubuntu listened because all of a sudden, like, you know, out of the blue one day, you know, I'm taking a look at one of the latest versions of Lubuntu, and it's been a few years now, but, you know, they were shipping Vim and HTOP out of the box. And that's very nice. Matter of fact, since I'm on HTOP, up. Let's take a look at what it's using as far as RAM and CPU. For CPU usage, uh, it's not really using any CPU, but it shouldn't be because I'm not really doing anything on the computer right now. RAM usage is using right at 600 megs of RAM of, of the six gigs of RAM that I gave this uh, VM here. So pretty lightweight on the RAM as well. Let me go ahead and close out this terminal. If I get back into the menu, we have a games category. There's not much here, just a 2048 game. Under graphics, not really much here either. We have our image viewer. We have our screenshot utilities called screen grab. I don't think I've ever used this program. Let's go to about. This is screen grab 2.8.0. This is a cross-platform application for fast creating screenshots of your desktop. Let's close that out. Also under graphics, we have Scanlight, which is a scanning utility. Uh, if you have a printer slash scanner, uh, you know, an all-in-one printer scanner uh, setup, 
Now, obviously, most people these days don't do much scanning. That's kind of a blast from the past. <laughs> people, I don't know if you know, you know, maybe the younger crowd don't remember that as much, but you, know, you used to have to scan documents all the time. Nobody ever does that now. Under Internet, we have Firefox as our default browser. Let's see what version of Firefox we're on here. Let's go ahead and open that up. And let me go into the menu system here. I'm going to go into help and about Firefox. And this is Firefox 131.0. And this is the snap. This is the Mozilla Firefox snap for Ubuntu. And I did want to mention that there are snaps here. Let me open the terminal. Now let me hit Control Alt T. Control Alt T is a default key binding in Ubuntu and all its flavors to open a terminal. And let me zoom in here. And let's actually, before I do that, let's make sure that I actually know what terminal emulator we're using here. This is the Qt terminal, Qt terminal 2.0.1. But now that I'm in the terminal, let's go ahead and do a uname dash R. What kernel are we on? We're on 6.11.0. And next up, I want to do a snap list. Let's see how many snaps are actually installed out of the box. Really, just Firefox. Um, nothing else here. I mean, it's a lot of like the standard core library snaps that have to be here when you install SnapD. But really, it's just Firefox installed as a snap. Now, if I do a where is Pipewire, they are using Pipewire as their audio server because when I do where is Pipewire, there is the location to the Pipewire binary. So Pipewire is installed. Now, one thing to note about this particular version of Lubuntu, they had been working toward Wayland support. They really wanted to have Wayland support by version 24.10. I don't think they managed to pull that off. So this is using Xorg. But if I didn't know whether it was using Xorg or Wayland, I could check here in the terminal by doing an echo and then dollar sign, all caps, xdg underscore session underscore type. And if it's using x, it's gonna return x, in this case, x11. Or if it was using Wayland, I would have gotten Wayland as output from that command. If you wanna see how many packages are installed on Lubuntu as your standard native Debian packages, you could do a apt list space dash dash installed, or if you didn't wanna type out that long flag dash dash installed, you could do a apt list single dash I. It's the same command. And what this does, it spits out all the packages that are installed on your system line by line. And now if you want to know how many packages are installed on your system, what you need to do is get a count of all of these lines. And you can do that by if I up arrow on the keyboard to get that command at list dash I again. And then I'm going to pipe that into WC, which is the word count program, and then give WC this flag dash L for a line count rather than a word count. And you can see there's 2,111 lines of output in that command, that means there's 2,111 packages installed on Lubuntu via the apt package manager. Now remember, I did the normal installation, so that's how many packages are installed with the normal install. Now let me exit out of the terminal. I'm gonna go back to the menu system very quickly just to see the rest of the programs installed here out of the box. The full LibreOffice suite is here. If I open the spreadsheet program, LibreOffice Calc, I just wanna see what version of LibreOffice we're on. This is LibreOffice version 24.8.2.1, LibreOffice, Really fantastic piece of free and open source software. When I say piece of free and open source software, it's actually several programs, word processor, spreadsheet, presentation program. But I, I love LibreOffice. I think it's one of the best shining examples of free and open source software out there. And finally, we do have a uh, sound and video category. There's really nothing here. Pulse audio volume control and VLC is the media player. So instead of having a separate audio player and a separate video player, we just have the one VLC media player because VLC, even though people think of it as a video player, it actually works as a music player as well. It's fine as an audio player. So I actually like that choice, just shipping VLC instead of two different players for audio and video. Now let's go into some of the uh, system tools here. I did want to check on the software center. They're using the Discover Software Center. So that's the same software center that uh, KDE Plasma defaults to. And let's go ahead and look for something to install. 
For example, maybe I want to install Elisa, just because I see it here. This is a music player. Maybe I, I like VLC as a video player, but I want a more dedicated music player. I'll install Elisa here. So install from Ubuntu, and it's gonna ask my sudo password. So my super secret secure password, I had to enter that. And then I get a little progress bar here. And it finished installing, and I can go ahead and launch it right here. Uh, through this button, or I could go back to the menu system and look for Elisa. And I press the button to launch, but nothing happened. Where is... Did it not install? Hmm, that is interesting. That might be a little bit of a bug. Let me go to sound and video. There's Elisa in the, uh, the menu system, but it does not look like it is launching. We do Control-Alt-T, Elisa. Uh, it is looking for some kind of library. Uh, it's looking for something that is not here. So I'm not sure what the problem is. I've never actually used Elisa. I was just trying a program <laughs> that was there in the uh, Discover Software Center. That was just the one that caught my eye. That is weird that that didn't launch, though. If I go back to it, a simple music player that should be easy to use. It does not require any configuration. Yeah, that's really weird. Uh, doesn't have a very high rating as far as here in the software center. I'm just going to assume that that bug is probably something to do with the uh, software itself, Elisa, and not with Lubuntu, the distribution. And finally, in the menu system, you have the preferences category where you can pull with things like installing additional drivers. Uh, you got settings for the window manager settings, which is open box, the open box settings, PyCom configuration, PyCom's the compositor. If you go into LXQ settings, then you get things like your uh, brightness, date and time, desktop settings, uh, setting the uh, cute theme with the Convantum manager, uh, users and groups, yada, yada, yada. One thing I do want to do is I'm going to right click on the desktop. I'm going to go into desktop preferences and I'm going to go to background. Because one of the things I want to do is see what wallpapers they have installed. You can see the default image is in user share Lubuntu wallpapers slash this is a Lubuntu default wallpaper dot ping. Well, let's go ahead and see what else is in that wallpaper folder. So if I scroll through this folder here, we have some older wallpapers, it looks like. Um, I wish I had a better wallpaper setter program. It's kind of clunky. I wish it just changed as soon as I clicked on things. But we have old wallpapers from 2004, 2104, 2204. So all the past wallpapers. Uh, and, and then we have the 2410 wallpaper. So really not much else to see there. Although I do really like some of the past wallpapers. I was hoping that they had some more like nature wallpapers and things like that. Now, I'm assuming I could probably go into the software center or just use the apt package manager at the terminal and maybe install other wallpaper packs. For example, the default Ubuntu wallpaper pack. I'm, I'm sure it's probably packaged up and I can probably get extra wallpapers if I wanted to. But for now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go back to the default wallpaper. Let me close that out. I'm going to hit control alt T one final time here. I'm going to go to the terminal. And for those of you that do want to explore some wallpapers, do an apt search. And I'm going to search for the term wallpaper. And this is all the things in the repository that have wallpaper as part of their name or description. And uh, you can see there's the Zubuntu wallpapers. If I scroll up, I bet I get a whole bunch of Ubuntu Studio wallpapers. Ubuntu with cinnamon wallpaper. Yeah, there's a lot of wallpaper packs from all the past versions, all the various flavors. There's a ton of wallpaper packs in the repositories should you want to explore those. So there you have it, a very quick and cursory first look of Lubuntu 24.10. One thing to note about Lubuntu 24.10, the same as Ubuntu 24.10, they're not long-term support releases. These are not LTS releases. These are the interim releases. They only get nine months of support. So you can't be on these for very long. These are for people that want a, a, a faster pace to the thing, right? Instead of being on something multiple years and then taking an upgrade two years down the road or four years down the road. When you install these interim releases, you're only supposed to be on them for about six months. They have a nine month support window, but really in six months, in April of next year, 2504 comes out. You need to be on that next release pretty quickly after it comes out. Because again, in nine months, this thing no longer gets any support. You're not going to get any security updates or anything. So just know that most Ubuntu users and including Lubuntu users 
they typically stick to just using the LTS releases. These interim releases are really for, again, more enthusiasts, people that want to follow along with the development of Lubuntu, or for those that have very new hardware that need the latest and greatest kernels and drivers for hardware support. All in all, I think this version of Lubuntu looks great. It seems to work well. Just a few minutes that I've spent with it here today. Looks like a fantastic release. So I want to congratulate the Lubuntu team on a job well done. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Matt, James, Steve, Armor, Dragon, Darloff, Daedalus, GDR, George, Lee, Matthew, Methos, Erion, Paul, Peace, Archer, Fedora, Reality, for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Soul, Astri, Tianrin, War, Gentoo, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon without these guys. This quick look at Lubuntu 24.10 would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen, these are all my supporters over on Patreon. Because I don't have any corporate sponsors, I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.